Jesus' name, welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church because today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. And on this Easter Sunday, we get to say that again and again, Christ is risen. And he is risen indeed. Alleluia. My friends, we are so excited to be here with you on this Easter Sunday. So let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Jesus Christ is risen today. invite you now into our time of confession and forgiveness. God, we hear your invitation to us. Come to me, you who are weary and heavy burdened. I will give you rest. We acknowledge our soul's need for rest and quiet nourishment. We lay down our burdens. We acknowledge our soul's need of connection with you. We confess our tendency to overlook rest as a necessary part of soul and self-care. We confess our pride in thinking that our work is so important that we may not set it down. We confess our readiness to believe that what we do determines our worth. We confess our obsession with productivity, results, measurable progress. We confess our tendency to forget that it is in you that we live and move and have our being and that your love is better than life. We ask now for body, mind, spirit, and whole person nourishment. For rest and resurrection, for new life, for healing and consolation of our souls. We ask for help in managing our time and our activities so that our infillings keep up with our outpourings. Where we have overspent ourselves, refresh us. Where we have misplaced our priorities, rearrange us. Where we have said yes when we should have said no, remind us. We thank you 
for meaningful work, for blessings and burdens. We thank you for rest. May we become present to our great need for daily bread, the presence of Christ in our lives. Amen. Hear the good news. The good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own works, but through Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. Rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Our first reading on this Easter Sunday is coming from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. And it reads like this. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism of John, announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with his Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death. By hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this Easter Sunday is coming from Psalm 18, verses 1 and 2 and 14 through 24. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of righteousness. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death, opened to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become a chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
welcome to our children's message this morning. And you may see positioned between Alan and myself three eggs. One that's blue, one that's yellow, and one that's green. And you may be thinking to yourself, what is inside of those eggs? It's candy. It's candy? No. Nope. Well, let's find out. Come across this first egg. We're going to open it up to see there is a heart inside of it. Ooh, what does a heart mean? What do you well, think a heart means on this day? Um, sometimes when we have a heart, it might mean love. That um, a heart stands for love. Well, it does stand for love. And for this purpose, it reminds us that Jesus had a life. And during his life here on earth, he taught us about what it means to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind. And love our neighbors as ourselves, no matter what they look like, sound like, no matter what language they speak, or how they navigate through the world. We are to love others as we love ourselves. And that is a reminder of Jesus' life here on earth. So we have a heart, which represents life, because if we didn't have a heart, we wouldn't be breathing. Right. And that in that heart, we love each other just as Jesus commanded us to do on this, in this life. Absolutely. Awesome. Nice. What's in the next egg? All right, here we go. Ooh, it sounds like a rock. Ooh, let's see. It is a cross. Ooh, it's a cross. And this is a reminder that Jesus also experienced death. And death mm, on the cross. Yes. So he understands what it means to live in love. Jesus also understands what it means to To die. Mm, That's kind of a scary thing. It is. But he died for the forgiveness of our sins. Stepped in place for us. So that through our faith alone, we would be provided forgiveness of sin. But he also understands what it means to die. We have that empathetic Jesus who recognizes and understands everything we experience. Okay. Nice. All right. One egg left. There's one like... Here we go. If that one's got candy in it, it must be a marshmallow. I don't hear anything. You don't? I bet it's a marshmallow in there. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's empty. There is nothing in this last egg. Did you eat the candy that was in there? I did not eat the candy that was in that egg. But it's a reminder that when they rolled the tomb away on the third day where Jesus was buried, when he died on the cross... He wasn't in there. Just as our banner says, he is risen. He is not in here. Just like we said at the beginning of this service when we said, he is risen. He He is is risen risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. It's this wonderful promise that Jesus made to each of us, to his disciples, to you, to me, to all of his modern day disciples living now, that on the third day, he'd be resurrected from the dead. And it's helpful And it's such a wonderful reminder that we live and have the opportunity to love others as Jesus taught us. We will experience death as Jesus did as well. But we will also experience a resurrection like his to have eternal life with Christ. And so through our faith, we know that we can get through anything. And not only is this how Jesus' life took place. He lived, he died, and then he was resurrected and ascended into heaven. It's important for us to tell the story to others and share the good news and know that our journey will follow similarly because of our faith alone in Jesus. Exactly. And so we, with excitement this day, can go out and we can proclaim to all the world that he is risen. He He is is risen risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Have a great Easter Sunday, everyone. See you next week. This solid ground
firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depth of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. 
And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. As I reflect on my faith journey as a child, as a youth, and even as an adult, it can be summed up And one life-learning phrase that's connected to the end of our worship services. Where we state, go in peace, share the good news. And the response, which you may know, is thanks be to God. Now how does this statement connect to my lifelong learning that's a part of my faith journey is because of this. When I was a child and youth and even an adult, I remember thinking to myself as we were dismissed from worship, what is the good news? I know we say, go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God, but what is the good news? So I would discern or ask questions and discuss with others connected to the church or faith community or individually, and I finally came across the answer. Not right away, but realized that the good news means the gospel. So when I got that answer, I was excited. I continued my journey of faith through life. And I realized, well, wait, I understand that the Good news means the gospel, but what does the gospel mean? And how does that apply to my life? Well, the gospel also means the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. All right, now I feel like I'm getting somewhere. I know that I'm called to share the good news. I recognize that means the gospel, and the gospel can be understood as the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, as told by the books of the Bible that include the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. As we acknowledge during our reading today, the gospel reading from John, where today we heard about Jesus' resurrection. So now... As I started to piece this all together, as my journey of faith continued through all stages of my life until now, I remember reflecting upon my life as a child and how I understood what Jesus' life meant to a certain degree as I continued to dig further into this good news, the gospel, Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. I had a good comprehension of what Jesus' life was. I remember learning about stories connected to Jesus' signs and miracles and his teachings. Similar to how we heard a couple weeks ago about how Jesus taught that he's the resurrection 
and the life as he rose Lazarus from the dead. Or how he healed the blind man. And I remember learning and relearning and pondering and discussing and discerning and wrestling with teachings of Jesus that included we should forgive others as Jesus forgives us. We shouldn't judge others. We should love our neighbors as ourselves. Even when they don't look like us, sound like us, have the same skin color as us, when they're different from maybe you or I. Also, to love our enemy as ourselves or treat others as we want to be treated. I think about these teachings and signs and miracles all together as Jesus' life, and they all point to how Jesus is the Son of God. I remember coming to that realization first. Came to a clearer understanding where I'm still learning today about what Jesus' life is and how that applies to my life, your life, and the world. But then, as we know, that the gospel is not only about Jesus' life, but it's about Jesus' death. And as I became a youth and young adult, I remember thinking, why did Jesus die on the cross? Now, I could answer you one simple phrase, Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Now, that's true. But did I have a clear understanding about what that meant and how that all takes place? No. But again, through my journey of faith, asking, discerning, questioning, trying to figure things out on my own and amongst the faith community, I eventually came to a better understanding. And I'm still learning today, but I came to this better understanding about, yes, Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sin, but that we have to go all the way back to the book of Genesis where Adam and Eve sinned against God and not listening and disobeyed him by eating that fruit from the tree which he said, do not eat from this tree. And how that original sin and Adam and Eve separated from the Garden of Eden, Eden, and that the punishment for their sin would be they would experience pain, suffering, and death. And that original sin has followed us all the way to modern day. It still exists in the world. And the penalty for sin is still death until we've been provided this opportunity through Jesus' death on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. So we know that sin still exists and the penalty is death. However, if we believe that Jesus died for the forgiveness of our sins and believe that Jesus stepped into our place and paid the debt of sin through his death on the cross, he substituted himself for me, for you, for this entire world. Because the debt still had to be paid. But he made that sacrifice and died for you, for me, for everyone, for the forgiveness of sins. And we receive that through simply our faith in Jesus. And I began to continue to learn and embrace and start sharing this good news of Jesus died on the cross for us, and this is what it means. I don't only know that phrase that Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, but I started to have a better understanding, and I'm still learning to this day, in this moment. Because as lifelong learners, we're still learning and embracing how special Jesus is to each and every one of us as Christians. And I continue my faith journey as I navigate through life again, feeling more confident, but knowing I still have a long way to go. 
And I know that when we are called to share the good news, that means the gospel. When we talk about the gospel, that means Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. I have a clearer understanding of Jesus' life and Jesus' death. And now here is Easter Sunday. We hear the story of Jesus' resurrection. And I remember as a child and a youth and even as an adult being so excited on Easter Sunday morning and saying, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And saying that phrase and memorizing that phrase and recognizing it was an important day in the church. An important Sunday defines the day of the week in which we worship. It's connected to so many things that we believe as individuals and we believe as a community of faith. But again, I understood that Jesus was resurrected from the dead. But I didn't necessarily fully understand why. Why was it important that Jesus was resurrected from the dead? Then I continued to discern, discuss, ask questions, engage in learning, wrestle with, try to figure things out on my own, try to figure things out in amongst Bible studies or other educational opportunities connected to the church. And then I eventually came to a clear understanding of why it is so important that we celebrate Jesus' resurrection on Easter and how that applies to our lives. As we recognize simply through our baptism, that we are baptized into Jesus' death and provided a forgiveness of sin through our simple faith of Jesus' death on the cross for the forgiveness of our sin. As he made that ultimate sacrifice. Now, we are also baptized into Jesus' resurrection so that we too may join Jesus in a resurrection like his. And then I started to start realizing how this all comes together, not perfectly, still learning, but I realize Jesus' life, death, and resurrection that makes the gospel, that explains this good news that we are called to share with other applies to my life. As I have a life, Jesus had a life. Jesus died, I'm going to die. Jesus was resurrected on the third day, and through my faith in Jesus, I too will join Jesus in a resurrection like his in the future, and have eternal life with Christ. We're provided a victory of life over death. So that is good news. That is so exciting. It's clearly the root and foundation of our journey as resurrection people, part of the Christian church, as individuals called to share the good news. Now, my personal faith journey to this day, still includes questions, learning, and discussions, all in an attempt to gain a better understanding of my faith in Jesus, my faith in the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and God's relationship with me, God's relationship with you, and God's relationship with the world. And as I and all of us are no different from the disciples depicted in the Gospel of John. I read aloud earlier. Who reached Jesus' empty tomb soon after his resurrection. Who despite spending three years with Jesus and walking alongside him during his ministry of teaching, healing, signs, and miracles, still did not yet fully understand the scripture, or what Jesus taught them about his life, death, or resurrection again and again and again. They were still learning during their journey of faith. Now, if you ever encounter someone who thinks they have nothing left to learn in their faith journey, and they are all-knowing regarding Christianity, which would mean they would know more than Jesus' original disciples— who were described as lifelong learners, I encourage you to invite them to our church 
For worship, which includes confession and forgiveness and communion, where we are reminded through Jesus' death on the cross, our sins are forgiven. I invite them to another educational event where we discuss, ponder, and engage with the teachings of Jesus and the Bible and how they are relevant and authentic to our lives today. So I invite all of us this Easter Sunday and beyond to excitedly learn together in order to have a better understanding of Scripture, the living Word of God we understand as Jesus. Ask questions together and journey together through all of life's ups and downs that we experience so we can confidently share the good news, the gospel, the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection with our community and world and embrace how by Jesus' life we have so many opportunities to learn and follow his teachings. Through Jesus' death on the cross, we are all saved. And through Jesus' resurrection, we have eternal life. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You call your church to witness to your salvation. We give thanks for all the theologians, the preachers, and the teachers, and to those that proclaim your gospel. Equip all the baptized to share the joy of the resurrection in all we say and do. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You bring abundant life throughout creation. The green blades of grass that rise and all creation greets the resurrection dawn. Preserve the vineyards and the orchards and those who tend to them. Feed us with the fruits of creation. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show your steadfast love without regard to borders or barriers or human-made divisions. Infuse your injustice in every nation of the world that all experience the peace that only you can give. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You anointed your Son with the Holy Spirit and with power. Encourage us by his example in our ministries of healing, care, and outreach. We pray for all who are sick or hospitalized. We pray this day for Artis Johnson, Charles Nettisted, Megan Harthoon, Ashley Harthoon, Arliss Ellingson, Kathleen Bruns Doppler, Ordine Berg, Dave and Pat Husaby, Phoebe and Goldie Thorland, Mimi Urig, Ardeen Erickson, Denise Schmitzny, and all others whom we lift before you. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have put gladness in our hearts. Inspire musicians and dancers to rejoice with songs of victory. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who foster our assembly's song. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you have raised Jesus from the dead, you show us your resurrection promise. With your holy ones who have sung your praise, free us from fear and empower us to go and tell the good news. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us all embrace each other in Christ's reconciling peace. God's peace, Pastor Eric. Peace be with you, Alan. God's peace be with each of you. At this time, we will give thanks for the offering we receive to proclaim Christ through word and deed here in Pelican Rapids, the state of Minnesota, throughout our country and beyond. Let us pray. Merciful God, we, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, my friends, as we come to the close of this Easter Sunday service, I want to leave you with this blessing. As you go out into the day and out into the week before you, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your backs. May the sunshine warm upon your faces and the rains fall gentle upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. The greatest day in history, death is being Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. As we go forth during this week and throughout the rest of the year, let us all embrace that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. See you next week. God bless.